Okay. I think we can uh, start with the uh, uh, final session of the day about applications and uh, deployment. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Oleg, and I'm happy to start this presentation by uh, Vincent. And um, so we all know about uh, code sharing, but uh, now we're going to learn something about car sharing. And uh, yeah, Vincent is an um, IoT software architect working for um, Continental uh, with a, uh, build a um, car sharing device. Uh, or that's the effort to build a car sharing device with a lot of different connectivity um, options involved. And uh, he's also a long time Riot contributor and maintainer. And I'm uh, very uh, curious to hear, hear about uh, the um, new device. Thank you. So thank you for having me. Um, better? Oh, yeah. So thank you for having me. Um, very glad to be here. Um, so I'm going to talk about the, the, the product uh, that we're developing. Um, uh, we're, we've been working on that for more than three years now. So um, I've been working on uh, Continental for almost six years now. Um, I've been working in Otakis in between, so Otakis is a, a subsidiary of Continental. So I moved from Toulouse to Brussels and now I'm back in Toulouse. And this product that I, I'll talk about is the, the third generation of the car sharing module that we are developing in Continental. So this is the logo of the key as a service uh, uh, portfolio. So, so we are part of the key as a service uh, portfolio in Continental. And uh, this presentation is about the, this product that is running uh, Riot. So I'll try to present the, the, the product and give a feedback about Riot. So I have a few teammates in, in the room. Uh, so you can ask uh, questions to me or to them uh, after the presentation. And I'll take the opportunity to talk about the team that is working on, on, on this product. So we have about 12 engineers um, spread in three locations, Toulouse, uh, Brussels, and San Jose in California. Uh, so yeah, when I think back about the, when we started this three years ago, we were about four in Brussels and now 12, so this is a big achievement. And I'm, I'm proud of, of that. Um, so a few key words about uh, the product. So the commercial name is ACCM and it stands for um, Access and Connected Car Module. So the internal code name is Rabbit. It's funnier. Um, so the, the first job of this product is to uh, allow accessing a car, so unlocking and locking it, and uh, with a smartphone, obviously. And the, the, the second job is to be a telematics unit. So. Uh, collecting data on the car and sending it, it to the cloud. So we need um, security, uh, so we use uh, well-known security algorithm, uh, ECC, uh, AES. Uh, we also have a secure element on board. Um, we need connectivity, uh, for this we use cellular, so 3G or LTE. Uh, we also receive SMS sometimes and we use BLE. The data source uh, are from the vehicle itself, so we have a CAN connector connected on the OBD port, and we also have a bunch of sensors uh, on the board, uh, basically an accelerometer and uh, an ADC to, to monitor the, the battery voltage. And last but not least, uh, we have a GPS. So the numbers um, are to just show that uh, we have three CAN interface. Um, we have three URLs, we have uh, an SPI, an I2C, uh, 22, that's the number of threads uh, run by Riot. Uh, 168 is the number of modules when I type make info modules in, in my, my console, including the, our own modules. So um, this is a, a big, uh, big application, uh, complex, and we have many challenges to f that we face. And I think that Riot uh, helped us a lot to face these this challenges. Quick overview on the hardware. So the, the brain is a STM32F4 uh, microcontroller. So as I said, we have a GPS in the modem. We have uh, a flash that we store a lot of logs, uh, vehicle data, uh, 
firmware for uh, firmware upgrade. Um, we have the so-called remote cloud key. So this is a product developed by uh, our colleague uh, in California. So this is a device that allows us to unlock a car securely. So this is like a key fob, uh, but remotely controlled, let's say. Um, a bunch of sensors, secure element, scan interface, and BI. So yeah, this is just an overview. Um, so a few words about what we contributed to, to Riot. So we started with uh, STM32 uh, development. So we helped uh, adding CPU, so that was a long time ago. Uh, uh, during that time, there was a lot of improvement that has been made by the community and that we uh, are lucky to have. So we worked on uh, F2, that uh, was the, the, the first uh, CPU that we used, F4 afterwards. And we also had a side project on the F0. Um, we developed a full can stack, so I talked about that two years ago uh, in the summit. Um, we worked on file system. Uh, it was really, really interesting work. And uh, we had the, the, the luck to have some other people from the community working on that at the same time. And uh, we also worked a bit on, on drivers, so that was yeah, just a notice. So, quick feedback on Riot. Uh, it's been really fun to hack. Uh, the modular design is really, really nice. Uh, and, uh, and the community has always been open-minded and, and, and welcoming. Um, with the, this modular design, we could really um, extend uh, Riot and make our own application on top of that. So, I mean, if, if I showed you our, our Git tree from, from our, our application, you could see that the same uh, organization as Riot is really a bunch of modules, and we really reuse that. And even if the, 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 the build system has uh, sometimes been complex, um, it doesn't really create a lot of issues, and it really has been easy to extend, and yeah, didn't really break too much. So, um, a few words on what we missed or what issue we had. Uh, the first thing that we missed at the beginning was really a, a proper uh, low power only. So now it's fixed or partially fixed. We worked uh, around some parts, uh, especially related with, to the timer. So we had some issues with X timer uh, using the pair if timer uh, on STM32. This is not a low power timer. So if you run an X timer, it means that you can never sleep. So we worked that around with, by using the low power timer. Uh, but, I mean, it's not the, the best solution, uh, but it works for our, our use case. Um, the, the challenge that we now uh, face the most are uh, debugging and security. Um, so, our product is really um, complex, and when, once it's in, in installed, um, we need uh, to have means to, to debug it. So, um, what we did as, as a first step is to have our own uh, log system. So um, hacking to have our own lock system was really easy. But uh, going forward to the next step of being able to uh, use that log uh, remotely has been a, a bigger challenge. And uh, security-wise, uh, we have to, to disable the shell uh, on the field. But this is something that we would like to get rid because the, the shell is so handy on, and powerful that uh, having that available on the field to debug a device would be really uh, Something, uh, something big. So yeah, the, the, the current issues with Shell are security. Uh, I mean, anyone who has physical access can use it, so that's that's not possible for us. And also, again, low power. Um, by the way, we are, we are thinking about uh, having a remote shell feature, but that, that's a lot of uh, technical and security challenge. So I guess we'll try to reopen that topic later, but. Uh, it's a bit on hold at the moment. So yeah, I've been very quick. Um, I'm wrapping up now. So yeah, I, I've not been as active as I have been in the past on Riot, but um, we really use it heavily now. Um, we have, uh, I think, a few thousand devices produced uh, that year, and hopefully uh, a lot more next year. And maybe because I didn't say, say that, uh, a few words about our customer. Um, I think it's no secret. So 
our main customer currently for that product is Avis, and we started to spread uh, a lot of devices uh, in some places in Europe and in the US. So hopefully next year, uh, a big part of their fleet will be connecting. Time for questions if you have any. So any questions? So you said you remotely unlock your car uh, over GSM. What happens when I'm in the forest and there is jo no GSM connectivity? Will I so be locked out of my car? We don't do it over GSM, but over BLE. And we also have the option to do it over GSM, but this is more a um, recovery option. So the, the main use case is to unlock with, with your smartphone over BLE. And we also have an NFC option, so we have an extra device mm -hmm. that is connected to the main device. And you can use NFC tags or even NFC uh, on your phone. Yes, thanks for your insights. Um, I was just wondering which BLE stack are you using? Are you using the STM stack or? Uh, our BLE chip is a uh, Scilabs, so we're using Scilabs. So is it including the host part as well? Yes. Okay. Hi, yeah, thanks too for the presentation. And um, how does it look like physically, the device? Can you show pictures? Oh, uh, I have a device in my bag. question, are you using a fork of Riot for what you are doing? Yeah. And what could you help you not use a fork? Uh, so we have a, a few pull requests open on the can uh, mm -hmm. with bug fixes and other stuff. Um, I think that everything that is in my fork is open as pull request. Oh, almost. <laughs> Even the board that you are using? Or? No, no, that, that's our custom board. Okay, but that, that that's part of our applicative uh, directory. So. Because putting it outside could be something you could be interested. Yeah, I mean, I so, don't so you don't have a, you can you could use Riot Master and your board outside. Yeah. Okay, because we can talk. <laughs> You mentioned security, and we talked about that this morning. Is there anything you can say about kind of the architecture or that you're using? Um, we're using only standard uh, algorithms, and then we built our own messaging system based on ECC. Uh, so we basically have a, a public-private key pair in, on, on the device and on the, on the, the backend, and every message are signed are, are encrypted with that one. And yeah, that's it, pretty much. Then we, we use TLS to communicate between the, the, the phone and the device. So we have TLS over BLE, which is custom made as well. But um, yeah, and on, and on the software part, we have a port of embed TLS uh, as a package in our own repository. One, one more question. You work for a big company. Were there any issues using an LGPL licensed uh, operating system like Riot? When we started that, I was part of a small company. <laughs> so uh, the, the issue was raised, but yeah, we decided that that was okay. Now that I'm part of a big company, the yeah, choice is made, so that's too late. Uh, I have two questions. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the security one second. Um, so you're, you're plugged in on an automobile, as I understand, which has a fairly large battery, but not infinite. So I'm wondering, wh was, were the lowest power modes really that important in that context, or? Um, I think that the, the target for uh, the lowest power mode is below 10 milliamps, which is a lot or not a lot depending on your point of view. Uh, and then when the, the engine is on, basically we can go whatever current we want. So. So, so when the car is off, you really are in the lowest power mode and you're woken up by some event or? Yes, so uh, technically with the, the, the STM32, we are using the, the stop mode, so the, all the core and peripherals are disabled, 
but we can still wake up and we don't do the content of the RAM. We don't use the, the deepest one, which is standby, uh, where you can only wake up from a low power clock and you have to go through the, through the reset process. So we don't use that one. So my second question was inspired by your comment that you use a public-private key pair, and I don't think you have a provisioning problem because you're, someone has to physically install the device and that person can be uh, some extra expertise and you have a GSMC of a SIM card, so I don't think you have a provisioning issue. But what I'm curious about is how are you generating your public-private key pairs during your manufacturing process and is, are they signed in some way? So um, the, the key pair uh, belongs to the security element. And okay. uh, our manufacturer, I mean, the, the, the secure element is a ST microelectronic chip, and it's delivered with the, 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 the keeper uh, generated already. And they sign, uh, ST signed the certificate of the, the, the public key. But we extract everything, not the private key, obviously, but we extract everything uh, at the end of line. On the so, so basically, you've outsourced the problem of initializing it to the secure element yeah. de uh, developer. Um, I'm a bit curious about the security implications of, of interacting with a car over its internal buses. Um, is there anything you can do in such a device to maybe allow locking and unlocking but not allow you to trigger the airbag or the brakes? So we, we connect to the OBD port, which is public. Um, so some cars have security, like gateways, uh, uh, between the, the, the OBD port and the, the, other net, the, the rest of the network. Some cars haven't. Um, though we, we don't uh, unlock the car uh, through the OBD port, so we, we're not using the CAN to do that. But um, yeah, in some cars, if you send a wrong request or, or, or you do something bad with the bus, you can put the car in some state that you don't want to have. But um, I've never seen uh, very dangerous stuff uh, due to that. I mean, you have a lot of uh, blinking and so on, but normally it's okay. Though, I mean, it's not completely our responsibility. It's also the, the responsibility of the <laughs> car manufacturer. But um, yeah, it's, it's a concern to be sure that uh, we don't send requests that we are not supposed to send. And yeah, we try to, to be uh, conservative on that. Okay, one last question. Okay. Um, thanks uh, a lot for this uh, very uh, interesting um, presentation. Um, can you uh, give a few more, few more characteristics of what you would expect from a remote shell? Uh, what kind of security characteristics and what kind of um, you know, debugging you're trying to get out of this? And because, I mean, as the more remote you are, like... Uh, uh. I think that PS is a very variable command. You can know the state of the of your first uh, We have a bunch of uh, custom commands as well that we can send to, to get the state of uh, I don't know the, the modem or whatever. And we we, we started the proof of concept uh, with some commands to send uh, the, the commands from the backend, send it to the device, and get the response in another message. But uh, it worked only for our own commands and. But yeah, basically uh, being able to do remotely what we could do uh, with a uh, USB to a connector is really something that could help in some cases. So yeah, either through Bluetooth or GSM or both. Okay, I would say let's uh, thank Vincent once again. And I think it was good that you were so quick. <laughs> <laughs>